in this beginner tutorial, we will turn a Figma design into this fully interactive 3D website by using a super easy 3D tool called Spline together with my favorite web design tool, Framer. You'll find all the working files down below. Now, let's go. Before we get to the fun 3D stuff, we have to first convert our Figma designs to a Framer website. Now, in order to export this, I'm just gonna select Structure and Details. I'm gonna go to the Resources menu and search for Framer. And then I'm gonna run the Framer plugin. And once I run it in the web browser, I get this modal. I'll just hit Copy to Clipboard. Now, if you do this outside of the web version in the Figma app, it will just copy automatically when you run the plugin. Now I'll jump over to Framer. I will go to my canvas here, paste it in on the side. You can see that it's uploading Figma images. Now, once it's uploaded, I'm gonna select the navigation. I'm gonna put it inside of the hero. I'm gonna change its position to absolute. I'm gonna pin it to the left, the top and the right, zero, zero, zero. Now I'm gonna go to my details here to the right. I'm gonna take this blur, copy it and paste it into the hero here. I'm gonna change the position to absolute. Then while moving it and holding down space, I'll just move it to the top like this. So it's in the top. Then I go to the next one, copy this, paste it in here, position absolute, move it while holding space. And then the third one, copy, paste, absolute, move it while holding space. And then the last images, I can even drag them just into the frame like this, absolute and change the positioning. Now I can zoom out. I'm gonna select the structure here, go down in the right sidebar. I'm gonna copy this color, copy, and I'm gonna paste it into this desktop frame. Now I'm gonna select the structure, copy, select desktop and paste. If desktop doesn't become a layout automatically, you can just hit plus here to make it into a layout. Then we're gonna to go to height and set it to fit content. Now we're not gonna make it fully responsive in this tutorial, but what we can do is set max width so that it at least doesn't grow infinitely large. So I'll just go to the left sidebar here and select all the sections by holding down shift. I'm gonna to go to size, max width. I'm gonna set it to 1200 PX. Now I'm gonna go and select the structure and change the alignment to center. And that's it for the initial export. If I hit publish, this is now literally already a website. We'll dive deeper into Framer later in the tutorial, but if you want to become a certified pro in the tool and create websites in minutes, sign up for the waitlist to my upcoming Zero to Hero Framer course below. Now, however, it's time to create our 3D object. So let's pop up a new tab and go to spline.design. Now, if you're not familiar with Spline, it's basically like Figma or Framer, but for 3D, super powerful, super easy to use. So what you do is if you don't have an account, you just create a new account. And if you have an account, you just log in, of course, and you create a new project. Once inside of a project, you'll end up in a view like this. We're gonna remove the rectangle. So hit backspace. Then we'll go back to Figma. I'll take this little rectangle here. We're gonna hit plus on export and just export it as a rectangle. And this goes for any kind of shape you want to export from Figma. It doesn't have to be just a rectangle. As long as it's an SVG, you're good. Once exported, you can go back to Spline, pop up your finder window and just drag it onto the canvas. Now, while holding down option and just using my trackpad, you can see that I can change the angle here. Before we do anything else, I'm just gonna remove the group here. So I'll right click in the left sidebar and say ungroup. Then I'm gonna remove the rectangle here or the actual group. I'm gonna take this shape here and rename it to cube. Now we can go to the right sidebar and use the extrusion option here, extrude it by 300 because the size of the cube is 300 by 300. So I want to have the extrusion as big so it becomes a cube. I'm gonna go to the corner here and set eight, same for bevel. 
and same for bevel sides. It will round out the cube a bit. Then we're gonna scroll down a bit and go to material here. For color, we're gonna go in here and change it to a nice blue. And I found one that I really like that is 0000, 000, 000 FF. It doesn't look very nice right now, but believe me, it's gonna be better. So just stick with me here. We're then gonna go to lighting, click on this shut eye icon and open the eyes. We're gonna change this to 80, which is the opacity of the light. Then we're gonna go to the plus here, hit plus, which gives us a new material. For this one, we're gonna click the drop down and go down to matte cap. I'm gonna change the matte cap to 75. I'm also gonna click here to change the actual image that's used for the matte cap. So I'm gonna go from this green one to the blue one. I'm gonna go out here, gonna place it below the lighting. Gonna once again use option and trackpad to change the perspective a bit. Then I'll go to directional light here, which is our light source for the scene. I'll go to the right sidebar, hit four here in the intensity of the lighting. I'm gonna disable shadows, so nope, we don't want it. Then from here, you can either use these handles to change the lighting however you want it, you can also go to the position here and change it from here. So let's say minus 150, 750, 450, maybe something like that. But again, if you zoom out and you take this handle, you can just do it however you want to. And yeah, you can spend a full day just tweaking lights. Believe me, I've done that in the past. Now, if you click on the canvas, you will get these menus here to the right. We're gonna click on effects, enable it. Then we're gonna click this little eye icon again on Bloom. So open our eyes to Bloom. Wow, that looks amazing. I'm also gonna go to the background color here, change to 070934. Now, if we hit play here, you can see that we have our amazing cube. Now it's time to create all the different states for our cube, because remember, it's gonna be animated. So I'll select the cube, I'll go to states and add a new state. I'm gonna call this multiply. For this one, we're gonna scroll down and enable cloner. We're gonna scroll down a bit more, change the count to eight, I'm gonna change the position to 305, which squeezes them together. And again, I'm gonna zoom out a bit and use the option key to kind of tilt it a bit. So maybe something like this. I'm gonna go back to the right sidebar and right click on multiply and duplicate it. I'm gonna rename it to grow. And for this one, we're gonna scroll down back to the cloner. We're gonna go to scale Y axis and set this to 1.5. Now you can see what happened here. We kind of increase the size of all of these clones. To make them go in the other direction, I'm gonna change the position Y axis to 150. Now I'm gonna go back up to the base state. And for the base state, we're gonna have a count of one. If we zoom out a bit and go back to the top, you can now see that all our different states look different. Base, just a cube, multiply multiple cubes and grow cubes that have grown. But now it's time to animate. So I'm gonna go to events, hit plus. I'm gonna change from start here to scroll. We're gonna change the type from steps to scroll. Start from page, start at, we're just gonna leave it zero but end after we're gonna change to 1500. And the reason here is that after some trial and error, I think that around 500 represents the full height of one section. And we have three sections that we wanna scroll through. So 1500. Now I'm gonna add a transition. We're gonna click it up. We're gonna change the first one to be base. The second one is gonna be multiply. Then I'm gonna hit plus to add another one that is gonna be grow. Now we're gonna hit export and we're gonna go to the play settings and disable logo. We're gonna have no page scroll, no orbit, no pan, no zoom, no soft orbit. We're gonna have no zoom when pinching and no page scroll. If I hit play and I scroll, it works. Don't live in an amazing time. So that's the animation, but now we need to add some Hollywood cameras. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit plus and scroll down to camera, click it. Then we're gonna double click it and rename it to Hollywood Cam. Then we're gonna go all the way to the right sidebar. 
change from personal camera to Hollywood cam. Now we're gonna start adding states again. So I hit plus, gonna rename this to be multiply. I'm gonna add another state called grow. And for the base state here, so if I go back to the base state, we only want a cube. Remember the animation I had, just a cube? So what we can do is go back to the cube, select it and click base state. Then we'll see just the cube. Now, if we go back to the Hollywood cam, we can zoom in here and find something that works. I think 0.7 is a good zoom. Gonna tweak it a bit so that it's kind of centered. Maybe we change the camera angle a bit by holding down option again, something like this. Perfect. Now we're gonna change to the multiply state. And again, we're gonna go back to the cube and change to multiply back to the Hollywood cam. And we can zoom out a bit, maybe change the tilt, change the position, something like this maybe. 0 0.35 sounds good. Maybe here. Now we're gonna select the grow state. Gonna go back to the cube. Gonna change the state to grow. Go back to the Hollywood cam, zoom out a bit change the position again something like this maybe maybe a bit more up now if we change between states you can see that we have our amazing animations maybe this one is not exactly how we want it maybe a bit more tilted like that and a bit more up like this but here you can see the different hollywood cams now we're gonna add another event we're gonna change it to scroll again. Scroll, start from page, end after 1500. Gonna add a transition, open it up, start from base, go to multiply, add another one for grow. And if we hit play, there is our scroll interaction. But before we get back to Framer to implement it, let's add some more life to it. Go back, I'm gonna select the cube, right click and group selection. We're gonna rename it to levitate. I'm gonna add another state and I'm gonna call it levitate. And for this state, we're gonna say minus 130. We're gonna add an event, a transition. And this time on start, it's gonna go from base to levitate and it's gonna loop infinitely in a cycle of ping pong. Now, if we play it, we have this amazing levitation in every state, but I still feel that something's missing. I think we want it to slide up as well. So let's fix it. With levitate selected, I'm again gonna right click and group the selection, gonna rename it to slide up. Now I personally like using separate groups for separate animations like this, but you could also just add multiple interactions in the events panel. And we're gonna add another state here. I'm gonna call it slide up. I'm gonna go back to the Hollywood cam and change to the base state. Go back to slide up. Actually, we're gonna open up levitate, go back to cube and change that to base as well. Then a back to slide up. Now we're gonna go to the right sidebar again. I'm gonna change the Y position here to minus a thousand so that it ends up in the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna hit this lock icon and change the size or the scale to zero. And I'm gonna change the rotation here to 45 and here to 45. I'm gonna right click on slide up and just push these changes to base state. Then I can just go back to the original state. So minus 150, one in scale, zero in rotation and zero in rotation here too. I'm gonna hit plus on events. It's gonna be a start event. I'm gonna have a transition, open it up. It's gonna go from base to slide up. And now if we hit play, it slides up like that. How magic is that? Well, it is pretty magic, but now it's time to get Framer ready for this export. So back in the Framer document, first of all, this thing gives me OCD. So let's just move that a bit to the left like that looks much better already. Now on the side here, we're gonna create a new frame. So I'll hit F and create a new frame. I'm gonna remove the background fill of this frame. I'm gonna go to the insert menu and search for embed and grab the embed and drag it in there. We're gonna select the frame again, hit plus on layout to make it into a stack. 
I'm gonna grab this stack right here and drag it onto our desktop frame. Let's see, I dragged it onto the wrong one, did I? Let's see here, drag it onto the desktop frame. There we go. We can actually remove these other ones here. So details and structure, remove. Now we're gonna rename this to scroll container. And this will be our scroll area for the scroll animation. I'm gonna change its width to fill. Its height is gonna be set to 300 VH. I'm gonna set it to be position absolute. And I'm gonna pin it to all the sides except for the bottom. I'm gonna scroll down a bit and change distribution to start. You can see that once we did that, this embed component ended up in the top of the scroll container. Now we're gonna select the embed or embed. Oh, potato, potato. <laughs> We're gonna go to position type, set it to sticky. We're gonna set the width to fill. We're gonna set the height to 100 VH. This will make sure it covers the whole height of a user's screen. So let's do it for all of our sections actually. So I'll go to structure, open it up. I'll select all of the sections. I'll set the height to 100 VH. Now, one super important thing is to go into our scroll container and change the overflow here to visible. The same thing for the desktop, scroll down, overflow, visible. If you don't do this, the scroll animation will not work. So super important. Now for the structure container, I'm gonna scroll down and remove the fill because we already have the fill on the desktop. I'm gonna go to styles here, hit plus, add C index, and we're gonna set this to two. This will make sure that our content is always above the embed element. I'm also gonna go and open up all our sections. I'm gonna highlight our blurs. I'm gonna go to styles here and set C index to minus one. If you don't see C index, you have to go to plus and add it. I'm gonna go and do the same for the images here. So C index minus one. Now with all of these settings, the scroll effect is ready for our grand finale, the 3D element. But the whole page is looking a bit static. You see, if we publish it, we open it up again. It's visually nice, but it doesn't feel alive enough. So before the grand finale, let's just add some quick animations to the text fields. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna select our heading, go to effects, hit plus, scroll animation, layer in view, center, replay yes. Then we're gonna click on enter here. We're gonna make a custom animation. So I'll set it to opacity one, just so that we can see what we're doing. Gonna change it to 3D. Then we have 24 on the X axis, minus 24 on the Y axis, and a 24 in the offset on the Y axis. So it kind of slides up in this 3D manner. I'm gonna change it back to opacity zero. Then we'll change the spring curve here, the spring transition to 240, 24 in damping, 2.4 in mass and 0.1 in delay. I'm gonna go to the effect here in the right, copy it by right clicking. Then I'll select this and this element, right click, paste, paste effects. Now, if we play it, we have this cool looking animation. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna select just one of these, copy the effect again. And now I can just take every one of our elements here. So just select the elements in our other section, paste effects, do the same for this one, paste effects, do the same for this one. I'm gonna target all of these, paste effects. And for the last one, target all of them, right click, paste effects. And now if we play it, as we scroll into the sections, we get this amazing thing. But I think I forgot something here. Let's try to target the images as well and paste the effect here too. So now if we scroll, it looks amazing, looks amazing, and it looks amazing. So with that done, with this smoothness, Let's wrap it all up by jumping into Spline again and getting our 3D animation. So now back in Spline, I'll go to export. In the settings here, I'm gonna change to viewer. I'm gonna change mouse events to be on global, full window. 
we're not going to have any logo. Now I'll update the viewer. Can even scroll down a bit here and run a test to see if it's performant. And yes, it is. It looks very green and nice. Back to export and just copy the embed. Head back to Framer, go out of the prototype view, scroll back up, select our embed element, scroll to the bottom, click on HTML and just paste the code in here and hit enter. Now, if we go to publish here, update it, click on the link, we have our animation working smooth like butter. Again, if you wanna learn all the tricks I personally use to create websites like this in Framer, consider signing up to the waitlist for my upcoming Zero to Hero course on Framer in the link down below. Until the next one, have a great life.